My name is Luc Soete and I'm rector of Rector Magnificus, as they say in the Netherlands, of Maastricht University. Well, two things. First of all, the topic, basic income, is something, as an economist, I'm of course a professor of international economics. Uh, so I'm interested in the topic. And the second thing is that I happen to know very well one of the speakers, Philippe van Parijs, who's a friend of my childhood. We both were at the same scouting movement in Brussels in the 50s and 60s. The basic income idea is that you give in an unconditional way you give a basic income to every individual in a particular country. And the big advantage of this idea is this, is this unconditionality. We have a lot of welfare systems in various countries and they are different, but they're always based on having contributed by work to this insurance system, for instance, or being to some extent under certain conditions by which you receive this welfare. In the case of basic income, it is totally unconditional. It is for every single person who is a resident, a legal resident in a country. Well, the unconditionality is a very important factor because basically what you do now is by giving everybody a certain income, it's of course a basic income, it's not a high income, it's a very low income as a matter of fact, but such a low income makes people free in the sense to decide whether they go to find a job, a high paid job, a low paid job, a part time job, to give a valuation between staying at home or not working or looking after children or looking after parents. All these choices today are very difficult to make because they're always under pressure of having a sufficient income to survive. By introducing a basic income, you open up the choices for individuals to look more carefully at what they live for and to what extent work is valuable for themselves in addition to providing an income. Well, I'm not an expert on these, but as we heard today, these experiments are pretty well done. They're carefully done in the sense of random-based, etc., really in the scientific way, in terms of seeing in which particular cities, local communities you can do this. The problem with all these experiments is, of course, they're partial. The amount of money is limited. It is not really a full basic income. You talk about half, sometimes a quarter of an income. And secondly, it's limited in terms of the number of people. It is in a particular city, on a particular local community. It's also limited in time. And so what we heard today in the conference, in the workshop, is very much that what we can learn from these experiments is interesting, but we should be very careful because these experiments are really partial and we never get really a full impact assessment of what a basic income would mean if it were fully introduced in terms of a full country or a at a level, for instance, which would be a full basic income. Well, I think the, the big problem about a basic income, of course, is that the basic income must be paid and it will be paid out of what we produce altogether. And unfortunately, what we produce is being monetized in our notions of a gross domestic product. And we raise income out of our gross domestic product, whether we sell it abroad or whether we sell it domestically in terms of value added taxes or other taxes on the work we provide into the production of these goods, the capital we use, etc. But this income out of taxation is always related to something which is measured in our GDP. The big problem, in my view, is that a large part of GDP or a large part of our increasing welfare or increasing well-being is not picked up in our GDP. As Philippe van Parijs mentioned, the justification for a basic income is to some extent that we redistribute the gifts we receive, so to say, from nature and particularly from technological progress. You, as a younger person than me, well, you work with a mobile, you've always known internet, you have uh, iPads and all other forms of new technologies, which all did not exist when I did my studies or when I was a young guy in the same age bracket as you. So there are lots of what Philip called gifts, which, have a, which accrue to the new generations, which are the gifts of technological progress, which are the gifts of living longer. So all these gifts are to some extent, there is no reason why we would not be prepared to redistribute these gifts to some extent in this notion of basic income. My problem with this view, which I fully support of course, is that a very large part of these gifts of technology are basically translated these days in free access. If you think of internet, of Facebook, of Wikipedia, all these services which are provided are free services. So there's a lot of free 
for no price and not included in our GDP production, so to say, in our societies, which is being already redistributed for free to everybody. So how can you extract out of this increasing immaterial production in our societies, can you extract taxation which you could use for a basic income? That I consider as one of the big problems uh, in terms of funding a basic income in rich societies such as our own, not to talk about poor societies such as in developing countries. I think Maastricht, just like any other city, would be a good place to conduct an experiment with basic income because we have also high pockets of poverty. We have relatively high unemployment in some parts of the city and it would be good to decide or to discuss how we could get a system by which we could provide within the city a basic income for all the inhabitants of that city and then to, ex to observe what exactly happens in terms of are people more interested, more active in terms of seeking jobs, part-time jobs, other jobs to complement the basic income, for instance, and hence having more freedom, or on the contrary, do you find that people are looking less for jobs and that you see that the unemployment, so the, as we discussed today, the issue is primarily do people find jobs which they are motivated by, like your job or like my job, for us a basic income has little meaning as such, but for all these other jobs, of course, a basic income could have a very significant meaning because there are lots of shitty jobs in our society, as Philippe van Parijs mentioned. And of course, we do as if these jobs are equal to our jobs. But they're not, of course. They're jobs where people have to fulfill criteria, be there from nine to five, uh, have to work against their own motivation often, etc. So in all these areas, I think a basic income makes a lot of sense. I certainly think so, because this is precisely the local dimension. You can indeed, uh, the big problem about the basic income is the one which I just mentioned, which is that you have to pay back or pay such basic incomes. If you were to do so in euros, this brings you back in the whole debate about the fiscal budgets you need for this, the limited resources you have, etc. So if you do it at the local level, in the local community level, you can much more use all these ideas about having a local currency which you can implement, you can do barter trade, you can have the participatory society, there's this whole sharing economy ideas which are developed. So I think in a local environment there are much more opportunities to start reflecting, experimenting on a basic income linked to such ideas about local currencies. Well, we should really have a discussion maybe within our university. We have a School of Business and Economics, which is of course the first one who could reflect on this. We have a School of Governance, which deals very much with public policy. We have a Faculty of Law, which of course could establish the legal frameworks in terms of how to introduce such schemes. So I think as an experiment cutting across the different faculties involving students, I think it would be something worthwhile experimenting with. <laughs> That's, uh, I don't know, I always wanted to become an economist and I'm very happy to be an economist. I think though that you have to really step out of your economic disciplinary boundaries and look at issues such as the one we discussed today and focus very much on reality and how you can implement ideas rather than just theorize or do fundamental research which isn't reflected in reality. Thank <laughs> you.